Hey guys and welcome, Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. It's another one of my hero guides and we are finally onto the SX heroes guys and we will be starting with Cicero. There will be six SX1 heroes to go through first and then we will have four SX2s, four SX3s and then onto the current latest heroes, Skanda and Son of Ragnar, who are SX4. So let's have a look at Cicero. Cicero is a footman hero, he's a support hero. As usual, the developers have got this description wrong. He excels at supporting allies and suitable for leading middle back row squads. Definitely do not put Cicero on your back row. Two of his skills have a range of three and they will not be able to reach the middle row or beyond of the opponent if you put him on your back row. So he's definitely, you really want him on your front row unless you had another hero who was more effective at being on the front row. So that's where you're going to want to place him. Let's have a look at his skills. As usual, first skill is of course the dictator skill increasing to the 23,100 marching capacity. His first hero specific skill skill two is prologue it's a passive skill passive skills activate after the troops have done basic attacks that's all that means and its effective range is three the target will be two random enemy squads um, so that's why you want him on the front row so that this skill will reach any of the three enemy squads and let's have a read of the description after basic attacks 30% chance to deal between 122% maxing out at 310% damage to two random enemy squads within range. So that's a nice amount of damage. Um, making them take 20% additional damage for two turns. So then you've got this debuff as well effect. So, uh, you know, support heroes are good if they are protecting yourself and also debuffing your opponent or buffing your own troops. So... As you'll see at these later levels, they all these heroes, they have multiple effects on their skills. The downside for Cicero with this first skill is, again, you've probably guessed it, this 30% chance. You're looking at it activating at best probably twice in a battle. Um, but, you know, that is a low chance for an SX hero. Third and fourth skills. Defensive formation increasing the troops in your squad squad's resistance by up to 50% and skill 4 increasing the might by up to 50%. Skill 5, intermission. It's a combat skill. Effective range is 3 again and two random enemy squads are the target again. And unfortunately, again, it's a chance-based skill. The chance improves this time. It's a 60% chance to have two random enemy squads enter the armor break status. So this is a debuff skill. So it won't cause any direct damage to the opponent. But look at this. This is a really interesting um, element. It will lower their defense by 65% and up to a maximum of 200%. Now I presume that by defense they mean resistance. Um... So that then your uh, combat heroes can do more damage to your opponent. And this does last for two turns as well. Um, so that's a pretty good combination. You've got a 60% chance of this lasting two turns. Um, so effectively, it's highly likely this would be an effect for at least half the battle if it, if it um, activates twice in the battle if it activates three times then it's going to be prevalent for you know three quarters of the battle so that's those are pretty good stats there his sixth skill the usual awaken skill you'll get the usual 250 percent bonus leadership effect it has an interesting extra 20 footman combat speed and then heroes formation gains 20 percent bonus might and resistance uh which is really nice big buff there being 20 percent Skill 7 is the use, is the regular discipline uh, skill, which means that you will get between 13% and 40% additional might for all of the troops in your formation, all three squads in your legion. And then on to the 8th skill, Curtain Call. Now, um, I believe actually the developers have changed this because uh, in some of the guides that we see, uh, this ending description used to be lasting one turn. Now, let's just have a read of what it does. So first off... It is a combat skill, and uh, so it's effective in the combat, and a 
effective range is two, and the target is one random friendly enemy squad with an effective range. Uh, so that is why you have an effective range of two, so that it can reach to any of the three squads in your formation. And it's another chance skill, unfortunately. So you have 23% up to a maximum of 50% chance to have the front row to have a 100% chance of evasion on the next three damage taken. As I say, lasting two turns. Now, there's a couple of points to, to raise about this. So if you have Cicero on your middle or back row, then this skill would still reach the front row and activate. Um, Cicero is one of only four heroes in the game that have an evasion skill. Uh, Warlord, Army Breaker, Hulk are the others. And next three damage taken. So this could activate 50% chance. It could activate, in theory, you know, if you do the numbers, it could activate up to four times in a battle. Now... The interesting thing about why the developers might have changed this from lasting one turn to two turns, if you think about it, usually if you're on the front of your the front row will take three lots of damage on a turn, and if uh, and he has that speed buff on his awaken skill, so if you have the higher the combat speed, the more likely that the higher the, the person with the highest combat speed goes first in a turn, right? So that's why combat speed is important. So if you had the higher combat speed, which is helped by that SIP skill, then this would then mean that if uh, that then your if this skill activates, then when your opponent tries to damage you on that turn, then you would have you would evade that damage. Now, if this was only one turn, and you were actually uh, your combat speed was lower, and you are second in uh, second to be a, to attack, right? Uh, to have your skills activate, then this skill would actually activate after it would have activated after the opponent had already done the damage, and it would only last for that turn, and then it would be it wouldn't be effective. So I think that is I think that was a mistake on the um, on the developer's point part, and that's why they've changed this. So that it does say two turns, so it will be active. Say if you're um, if you're fighting, you're activating your skills, etc. A second in the turns, then this will roll over into the next turn for you. Um, that's my understanding of it. And um, again, a hundred percent chance of evasion. That's going to be really good at supporting your front row, avoiding that damage. In general, what do I think about Cicero? Well. Look, if you have a look at the best hero combinations, you're not actually going to see him on any of the footman hero combinations. I think the main reason for that is that obviously all three of his skills are chance-based. And as I've said before, when you get to this higher level, if a hero just has three chance-based skills, they're generally not going to be in the meta one or two combinations that you can have in the game. However... You know, it's highly possible that you're going to pick up a Cicero in your end of season rewards in Eden. You know, you only get you get the options for uh, recruitment one or recruitment two in the season, and then you'll get one of the you know seven heroes. So there is a chance that you get Cicero, and obviously you can collect him through fragments. Um, so is it the end of the world if you do pick him up? I would say no. It's not the end of the world. Like if you don't have a bleeding steed, if you don't have a Datch. Um, then getting Cicero is not a bad thing. And, you know, any SX heroes are, in general, 90% of the time, they are going to be an upgrade on um, your normal season heroes in general, certainly seasons one and two. Would you... But that's the thing. If you if you do have Bleeding Steed or you do have Dutch, then, uh, you know, they're going to be... Or Skander, if you pick up Skander in SX4, then they're going to be a priority for you. And... You're, you've got so many demands on your hero fragments as well. So I would say if you do pick him up and you get a duplicate for him pretty quickly, uh, then yes, okay, he's worth developing, isn't he? Any hero, when you get a duplicate at this level, you know, you're going to want to have a couple of footman legions. You Ideally for Eden, you actually want to develop four footman legions for when you're attacking capitals or towns. Um, that would be my opinion on it. I'm certainly working on two footman legions at the moment. 
But in general, not a lot of players use Cicero. And again, like with Divine Arrow, I don't have any. Um, I don't have any um, battle footage for you because no one that I, no one has him in my alliance. No one has. Uh, no one used him in our in the state we're up against this this uh, this week. So um, unfortunately, I can't show him in action. But and this that will be the case for some of these SX one heroes as I do the reviews. Um, SX twos and on. Everyone has them. Every, there will be footage, definitely. Uh, but just for some of these guys, not a lot, not all of them are used by a lot of players. So that is kind of everything I wanted to talk about with Cicero. Just to kind of uh, overview again, he is a footman hero, support hero. You probably will have him on your front row. And um, his skills, he has one direct combat skill, which will do damage. Two of his skills do uh, debuffs to your opponent. And then you've got this nice evasion skill on skill eight. But again, all of them are chance based, which do that does, you know, uh, restrict you in terms of his abilities. And um, you'll, if you, if you have a footman legion and he's going to be an upgrade for you, then obviously, you know, you can pop him on the front and you can, um, put any combination of mid row and back row footman heroes behind them or if you really uh, don't have a middle row footman hero um, then pop him in there as well guys basically if you don't have a have a scander or a bleeding steed or a, a jade rakshasa um, then then you could certainly put cicero in the middle there because of of the, of the range he does have a range of three he'd still his two other his two skills would hit the front row on the middle row from the your middle row uh, in fact, they'd hit the both both front the front two rows of your opponent, wouldn't they? So um, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Um, that's everything for this video, guys. I hope you found uh, this informative and helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please do uh, click on the subscribe and ring that bell. Uh, I'd be interested if any of you do have Cicero and what your comments are, what your experiences are of him. That would be really um, that would be great to kind of get that additional information for everyone watching on the channel. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you could share my share my YouTube channel on your Alliance Chat, Providence Chat, Guild Chat, if you're in Eden, and of course through Line, WhatsApp, Discord, Viber, whatever you use to communicate with uh, the players in your Alliance. That would be much appreciated, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.